action. Hi there, everybody. I hope you are surviving your quarantine as well as we are here in Chicago. Um, we are truly now living in the age of globalism, by which I mean global pandemics. And so like everybody else, we're trying to find ways to keep ourselves sane and practice this art we love. So right now, uh, Forteza is shut down, the Chicago Swordplay Guild can't train, and we're trying to come up with ways to keep our members engaged and some of the larger GEMA community. Fortunately, my student, Nicole, happens to have a saw on the top of her house. So I have a little bit of room where I can show you some exercises, at least until they expand the quarantine to no gatherings whatsoever. I do want to make the point that enough, a lot of these videos that I'm going to show you, I'll do with a longsword. And we're going to frame this vertically rather than horizontally, in part to give that sense of managing tight space. I could shoot this wider, but that kind of defeats the purpose. Because if you're in an apartment, you may not have anywhere outside you can really go to do anything. So I'm trying to show you, a, a kind of convey that sense of working within your limits, okay? Obviously, you're probably not gonna do a polex routine then. Maybe you are, I'll leave that up to you. But the idea here is, mostly what I'm gonna show is with the long sword, but almost any of these actions could be done with an arming sword if you don't have room to work with the long sword. Okay, so many, many, many of these same drills could be done with the long sword, I mean an arming sword. By the same token, if you do have room or if you can go outside, almost everything I'm showing you will work with pole arms as well. So there's no reason that you can't use these sorts of actions to practice with your big weapons either, if you have space. If you're cut off from your gear, maybe it's in your, in your gym or someplace where you can't get to it, you know, a doll, a yardstick or a meter stick for our European friends, that'll get the job done just as well. It's a perfectly good stand-in for a sword for our purposes here. And then finally, you know, if you can't even fit that, I bet you can find something the size of a Boston cello. And while it may be a little hard to simulate a long sword here, because it won't have that inertia and that weight, you know what? It's better than nothing because at least it treats you to unify your hands and really pay attention to what your body's doing. So in the videos that follow, you will see me using my friend Mr. Brescia here. But remember that any of these tools would be absolutely appropriate. So to that end, I will look forward to seeing all of you on our first video. Hi everybody, this first set of videos is going to be looking at the actions that make up the Scholar Assalto. The very first one is just ribbon cutting, by which mean a simple series of rising false edge cuts that turn into descending fendente. So falso satano followed by a true edge <coughs> fendente. Now, one thing about the drill is that it's easy when you don't have a partner to just make this about rising and falling from one side or the other and not thinking about any context. So what I want you to think about is your footwork in this drill. And the idea is that if this is the center line where the opponent's coming at us, I am moving with a triangle step each time so that I am moving, after that first repetition, 45 degrees off the line from where I started. I'm not just passing back and forth in place. So the idea here is the opponent attacks me, I gain his flank. Or with the sword in hand, parry, response. From the other side, the trick here is that if it's a reverso he's throwing, it's the exact same angle. If it's a mandrito, I have to be careful because a satano passes on the same line, our swords will pass each other. So my sword flattens out a little bit. See how the pommel is touching my forearm? And that allows me to execute the ribbon. Again, you'll notice I'm 45 degrees from where I started, roughly. So the idea here is that you are displacing, gaining the flank, parrying with the false edge, attacking with the descending true edge. Okay, now let's just go ahead and do those. I'm gonna do a couple of slow from both sides, and then I'll pick it up a little bit. 
That was the first one. Now, a couple things to look at. Firm footed from my reverso side as I parry, stepping with the risposta. I fall down to Porta de Ferro Mizana. I open my hips. See how the toe turns out? That opens the hips when I'm in Tuta Porta de Ferro. We'll do another video about that sometime and why that matters. Now, as I execute this blow, because they are swinging still to my left temple, I need to get out of dodge. This is a weaker parry than parrying behind their cut. So I move with the parry, and I make the risposta with the second step. So these two actions are not perfectly symmetrical. Firm, step. Step, step. All right, now just a few without me talking. I find this makes it a great warm-up for any other exercise and also just brings in some of the most basic actions of the entire Italian school of fencing. Defend with the rising falso, immediately seize the initiative by crossing that X with a descending true edge blow. See you soon.